So, I want to talk about the difference between successful producers and unsuccessful producers, that's to say prolific artists and amateurs. And one of the things that I've noticed is that it comes down to their relationship with time. Now, what you'll notice, and, and maybe this resonates with you and you've noticed this as well, is that they still have the same desire, the same passion, the same ambitions to achieve great things, to get the music out into the world, to connect with people, to have an impact on the scene they love and to share that emotion that they feel when they're on the dance floor and that the hairs on the back of their neck go, or even maybe you're a DJ, when you're DJing and you get that reaction. They still want to do all of those things with their music. They're still ambitious. They still have the goals. But when it comes to time... Successful producers, they'll fill their time in the studio with distance run. And what I mean by that is whether they've got 15 minutes, 30 minutes, a couple of hours or a morning, they'll go into the studio and they'll make a meaningful uh, difference, meaningful progress to finishing their tracks, to getting their tracks out into the world. Whereas amateurs, they tend instead to use time as an excuse, an excuse as to why they can't do those things. And I had a, a really interesting message. It was a couple of weeks ago in response to one of the Finish More Music podcast episodes. And someone just reached out and said this really resonated with me because I find myself making the excuse of not having enough time and of being too busy to work on my music. So I picked up my phone and I wrote back, are you telling me that if I follow you around, if I was to be in your world and I followed you around for a day, that I wouldn't find 30 minutes for you to write music. And they simply wrote back, you got me. Couple of exclamation marks. And that maybe is a question you could think of yourself. If, if I or somebody else, maybe not me, might be a bit creepy if we don't know each other. If somebody followed you around for the day, could they find 30 minutes of your time or an hour of your time to write music or even 15 minutes of your time for you to write music. And then I got another, uh, I was going to pick up my phone, but I'm talking into it, of course. I got another message as well. Um, in fact, it was a question that we got asked for the Ask Me Anything that I sometimes do on Instagram. And um, I've written it down, actually. It said, Keith, advice on getting out of bed to write music. Advice on getting out of bed to write music. And this is tough love, but... I would be doing you and this person a disservice if I wasn't honest about this. If you won't get out of bed in the morning to go into the studio, or you won't go to bed early enough at night to make sure you're able to get out of bed in the stu to get into the studio to write music and to chase down your goals, then you simply don't want it enough. And that's okay. And that's totally fine. I think the challenge is if you are putting yourself through the ringer saying that you do really want it when you don't. And it's okay not to want it. If music to you is something that's throwaway, if music is to you something that either, you know, I'll take it or leave it. I could do it or I don't. That's totally fine. But if, on the other hand, music to you is like the air that you breathe, it's incredibly uh, important to you and you've set these goals and you've set these ambitions and there's things that you want to achieve and maybe there's things you've been saying to yourself for years that you want to get done then it's important to realize that saying that I don't have time is just an excuse and you can have results or excuses but you can't have both you can have results or excuses but you can't have both and one of the things that tends to happen is that you see successful producers are using their time to write music and amateurs are using time as an excuse to not write music. And it makes sense when you think about it because we tend to make excuses um, when we fear something, when we're worried about something, when we're uncomfortable with something. And what's really going on in this situation is we're saying, well, if I don't have enough time, then I can't fail. Because it's not my fault. It's time's fault. I didn't have enough time. Therefore, you can't ever discover that 
you're not good enough. You can't ever fail. You can't ever be judged. But that's the thing. Beliefs and excuses are just lies. But worse than that, we live into them. They form our reality. And so when you think about this, by default, an absolute guarantee, if you say I don't have enough time, it's a guarantee that you will fail. It's a guarantee that you'll never be good enough because you won't be doing it and you will be judged. Not on your music, but on the fact that you never took the shot, that you never had the courage to go for it. You never had the courage to go all in. You'll be judged by default. And we know that it can't be that I have enough time because you can have an entire weekend and come away empty handed. And maybe you've done that. Chances are you have. Right? You've got a, that magical weekend where this is the weekend I'm going to go into the studio and then you come out empty handed. So it can't be time. It must be what you're doing to fill that time. And you can have person A who has the entire weekend to go into the studio and they just procrastinate it away. Maybe uh, it's organising the, the sample bank, or it's reading a manual, or buying a new plugin, or watching tutorials. And then person B, you can give them an hour, and they will make meaningful progress towards finishing a track. Is it possible that someone in one hour can write a killer idea? They can write an idea that they're lit up about and then have a plan in their mind of how to turn that into a finished track. What the arrangement, what the journey is going to be. Absolutely, right? Of course. Is it possible that they can go into the studio and arrange the idea from yesterday? Sure, it won't have all the finesse, but it will flow. It will be a complete track and they can leave the studio with a list of things that they're going to refine when they go in the next day. Is it possible that they can go into the studio and mix a track down? That they can make the most Im biggest improvements to the sonic quality of the track in 60 minutes? And absolutely, the biggest improvements to the mix down are gonna happen in the first 60 to 90 minutes. So again, it's absolutely possible. And what you find is that successful producers use the time they have in the studio to focus on high value activities. They focus on the 5% of things that will get them 95% of the results. Unsuccessful producers tend to focus on the 95% of things that will only get them 5% of the results. So a really good example of this, we have a guy in the community, Paul Locke, and Paul found himself in a situation where he had a full-time job and they had baby twins, twins, baby twins come into their life. You know, it's like, like one baby. I, we, I don't have children. Mrs. M and I don't have children, but you don't have to have children to see the amount of time that they take, right? Full-time job twins and he was starting a brand new genre so he'd never done anything with it before and he was struggling to finish any of his tracks and he didn't tell himself the story I don't have enough time he told himself the story well I have all the time in the world but the time that I do have I'm going to focus on the highest value activities so what happened well he is now one of the biggest, most well-recognised producers in his scene, which is Deep Disco. He is collaborating with, he is best friends with, the people who used to be his idols, his idols. And he sent me a screen grab of his Spotify account um, for 2021. So in December, when you get all the stats, over 4 million, 4 million plays. And that is a prime example of the 5% that gets 95% of the results. And that's really the secret. It isn't about time. It's about what you spend that time focusing on and what you're doing. Because how are you ever supposed to get different results if you focus on the same things that haven't been serving you well for years? If you focus on the 95% the of activities that only get you 5% of the results. And if you're doing that, then you never will make any progress. But people who focus on the 5%, they make exponential growth. And that's why I coach all of my members inside of my signature program, FMM, on how to 
identify what the 5% is and how to act on it, how to action it. And as a result, they see fantastic results. So speaking of running out of time, speaking of not using your time effectively, I'm going to give you a quick reminder. We've got coming up on the 21st of April, so very, very soon, next week, the Free Finish More Music Workshop. So this is a workshop that we run once per year. It consists of a series of training videos and live training from me as well to help you implement everything you learn. We give you downloads, you get workbooks, roadmaps, blueprints. It's called the Finish More Music Blueprint. And the promise of the program of the workshop is very simple. You will walk away with a proven process for finishing every single track you start. So you'll know what you're doing. You'll know what the 5% is that gets you the 95% of results. And also you'll know how to consistently level up your skills and the quality of your music. So it's finishmoremusic.com forward slash workshop if you want to be involved in that. And if you're someone who's sort of saying, oh, you know, but I'm a procrastinator and I'm a perfectionist and I'm full of self-doubt and maybe I've taken all these courses and they haven't worked or I've watched loads of tutorials and they haven't worked then this is exactly for you we build it specifically for you and we run it once per year because it takes so much from us and it's only up for a limited period of time so if it's something you want to do you want to be involved we've got a free Facebook community that comes with it that's open right now we're already going to start doing training and start doing a runway up to the workshop, then it's finishmoremusic.com forward slash workshop. So what are you saying? Because I can see we've got a few, few things that are getting said along the way, and I just want to say hello to a few people. Let's have a look. Hey, up, Luke, what you got? Just had my first track signed off to being in the FMM family. Incredible course and community. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful. Absolutely love it. How are you, buddy? Good to see our man Stevie Jones as well. Look, in the house. Fantastic stuff. So if you're in the um if you're in that group, group, and if you're not, jump in. It's literally a free group. You simply go to finishmoremusic.com forward slash workshop. Jump into the group. I'm actually going to um post Paul's story in there so you can see what he did so you can emulate it because it's so important when you see other people in a position that maybe you're in now who've achieved these things that's when we start to see hang on I can do that you see what's possible for you and whether you think you can or you think you can't you're right you know because if you don't believe that you can do something when the going gets tough you'll never go all in you'll never bite down on the gum shield to do it. So I'll post that up in the group. If you're not in there at the moment, do jump in, introduce yourself. We'd love to see you there. And I think that's it. Mrs M, anything else to add? Peace out.